let us put our hands together just so we may celebrate the life of the legacy and the great man. Certainly this man has touched many of us in this room. And we come to not say farewell, but we will see him again in the morning. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. We call out to you. Verse 6, therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and we prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not fall. He maketh me to lie down in great pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, go up through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they come from me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, man. And I will go on the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Come on, y'all. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. First, I'd like to extend my condolence to family, friends, and all of you gathered here today. Uh, on behalf of the community of this church in Barberton, just want you to know that if there's anything that we're capable of doing, of helping you in the future, know that we're just a phone call away. And know that God loves you and so do we. And, uh, times like these, there's sometimes just no words to give, uh, but we just give thanks unto the Lord for the opportunity. 
know what uh, Mr. Robertson, I was never about to call him Boo, my dad would have killed me. But, uh, uh, we just thank the Lord for that. So with that being said, let us go before the throne of grace. In Jesus' name. With all heads bowed, great and heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you this morning, Lord, we just thank you, we praise you, and we magnify your holy and wonderful name, Lord. We give thanks unto you this day, Lord, and hallelujah, ask that you would just bless this service in the manner, manner in which only you can, oh God. Father God, we know, hallelujah, that hearts are heavy and souls are sad, no oh God, but Lord, hallelujah, we give you thanks, oh God, for the life, hallelujah, that Mr. Robertson lived, oh God, and just the opportunity of getting and knowing him, Lord Jesus, in the way, hallelujah, that we did. Father God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus uh, that you would bless this service right now, Lord, in the manner in which only you can, Lord. Uh, and when it's all said and done, oh God, uh, hallelujah, when the people are gone and uh, Lord Jesus' lights are dimmed, oh God, we ask that you would just bless this family in the manner in which only you can, Lord. Father God, we ask that you would just comfort them right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Uh, comfort with love, hallelujah. Comfort, Lord Jesus, uh, with your spirit, oh God. Yeah. Father God, we pray right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, uh, hallelujah, that you would just continue to bless and be a blessing unto this family. Yeah. Father God, in all that they do and say, oh God, let them look. Yeah. To the hill from which cometh their help. All right. Their help cometh from you, O God, the one that made heaven and the earth, O God. Yes. Father God, bless and we shall be blessed. Keep it, we shall be kept. Yes. For in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we do pray. Amen. Let everyone say amen. 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 <laughs>
but we are comforted by the wounds that the God will not put more on us than we can bear. Whereas we believe the word in John 14 that encourages us, <coughs> let us not let your heart not be troubled. We believe in God, also in you. In my Father's house there are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Therefore, we, it resolved that we embrace the family because all of us have a common bond that we will connect us for the rest of our life. We cannot replace Brother Robertson's school, Robertson, but will attempt to demonstrate his love and compassion for you. In a bittersweet moment, another angel has found his wound and has set off our life safe into the arms of God and to those that have gone toward them, waiting and anticipating his arrival as they make their way into heaven. A copy of this resolution will be placed in our church archives and a copy to the family. Humbly submitted, Vision of God and Ministry Church, Bishop Demi and Pastor Tina Furla, Pastor in Providence. Resolution to the family, Robert Lee Robertson, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever, whoever so liveth and believeth in me shall never die. John 11, 25 to 26. On behalf of Pastor A. Watson Sr. and the Livingstone Baptist Church, we extend to the family our deepest and sympathy and sincere sympathy. Whereas we know that your loss and sorrow is great. But in the time for the loss, we want you to know that the Lord is with you every step of the way. And whereas we remind you of the words of Jesus Christ in John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, and my father called for a long message, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, that I am. There he may be also. Therefore, we have resolved that the Livingstone Baptist Church, family love you, we may be encouraged by the words of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and may look for God for strength. During this difficult time, we have further resolved that the resolution will become an official copy on file at the Livingstone Baptist Church and a copy will be given to the family. Carefully submitted this 27th day of February 2021, the Livingstone Baptist Church, Barberton, Ohio, Pastor Paul A. Watson Sr. The Christian All Stars, Akron High Resolution, with heartfelt sympathy to the family of Brother Robert Lee Robertson Booth. The members of the Christian All Stars feel this ready to acknowledge and express our love for our founding members during this time of freedom. Brother Booth, along with four other members, organized the Christian All Stars in 1958. For more than 50 years, he served as commander, lead back, background vocals, and songwriter. Although his title was manager, Booth was so much more to hundreds of young and old men who joined the group. He was a father figure, a friend, a uncle, a brother, advisor, disciplinarian, and even provided shelter for those in need. Booth would sometimes give the of being a tough guy, often telling various members, you ain't worth two dead flies. And everyone knew that he was softly at heart and would give you the shirt off his back and the last dog. These sentiments are echoed throughout the entire gospel quartet nation. 
brotherly with a devout family man, as demonstrated in one of his songs, Take Care of My Children. Yes! Yeah. Yes! Yeah. Testimony of his love for his children, and right away, one of the most respected songs throughout the country. Now, therefore, let it be resolved on, that on this day, we bow in humble submission for God. He has called one of the great gospel warriors home for the struggle of his life into the comfort and peace of heavenly arms. For as it is said, 1 PSM 4 and 14, for since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back his people to our God. It is with this knowledge that we understand that although Brother Luke is absent from the body, he is present and in peace with the Lord. To the family, cry no more. We bring man door for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Brother Robertson is at peace.
he realized that he didn't want to pursue this as a career, and at the time he wasn't called to be a cruiser. Booth served in the United States Army and received an honorable discharge in 1953. Shortly after moving to Barberton, Ohio, to be with his parents and siblings, he met his wife and married Bessie Brackley. They had nine children given to them that were their needs. Booth took in pleasure raising his children and he encouraged them in academic studies and athletic activities. On Saturday morning, Booth would also enjoy giving pep talks to all of the boys in the neighborhood prior to a full day of tennis football. Booth worked for Railway Trucking for 23 years. In his spare time, he would travel the country seeing doctors to In 1956, Booth started his first protest group and it was called the Christian All-Star. And he later founded Booth and the Boys and continued singing for almost six decades until his health suffered. He produced five albums and he was the key contributor and lead vocalist for over 40 songs for the God of Glory. Booth was preceded in death by his wife, Essie May, and his legacy and memory will be cherished by his children, Robert Jr., Frederick, Alvin, Reginald, Christopher, Kenneth, Sabrina, Patrick, Timothy, and Shelby, and Jonathan L. Harris of Paxco, Washington, his sister, Alice, and Ann Roberson, Akron, sister-in-law, Eleanor, her brother, Colin, and Bertha Bowen of Cleveland. He truly loves his family and will forever be remembered by numerous grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and other loving relatives and friends. He will be treated next like the boy that stood out by his time and he will love him.
think you still have to have our reunions. I hope that we can still celebrate together. I love my grandparents so much that I made my heart fall. So many days. It was three days. <laughs> Yeah, I love 
Yeah. I instill music a great deal into my life and playing the piano. And I still have a love for music. It's been passed on to my kids. I just want to honor him and let him know yeah. that I love him and I love family. I love you all. God bless you.
grandma, we have so many grandchildren and great grandchildren. And we always were at their house, we had to work on their food, shelter. <coughs> Nothing, they just took care of us. And I think we owe it to them to keep the family together. We said it for a reason. Yes. And I, I say these things, and I hope somebody works, because we have a large family. And it shouldn't die here. So I, I love you, Grandpa, and we all are so, 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 so much more. I don't miss visiting him, and he on top of the ground. I'm going to miss you telling me to lose weight. I'm going to miss all your funny jokes. But I know you don't feel no pain. And it's just our job to make him proud. We're moving forward. So I love each and every one of y'all.
those last few days, he was saying, baby, you okay? He always made sure to check on everybody else. Even yes, when I would yes. say, Grandpa, how are you doing? How are you feeling? He would never voice any complaints. He would never say how he was feeling. He would say, I'm a butter ground. And he would yes. leave it at yes. that and never complain. Always wanting to protect and, and make sure everybody else around him was good. And that's one of the things that I'm definitely going to remember about my grandfather, love about him. And that's basically it. Grandpa, I love you. I love you, Grandpa.
Well, I started getting some success and having an opportunity to have success. I talked to my dad, and the one thing that I always tried to do was whenever it was time to make a decision, I would consult my father because he always wanted to make my father feel as though he was still in charge. He made all the decisions. No matter what I decided to do, I would run past him, and a lot of times with my family and brothers. It wasn't the best thing. I remember times when I got them all cars for Christmas. My younger brother Tim wasn't doing well in school. So my dad threw it to the side and said, Well, you don't reward that behavior. Right. 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 right? So I said, What do you mean, Dad? Tim, not getting his lessons. <laughs> Tim don't get a car. I said, well, that's, that's going to ruin a Christmas. That's going to ruin his Christmas. He said, well, you'll do better next time, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I pull my brother Tim to the side and I tell him, hey, Tim, this is what daddy wants to do. So we will always respect daddy because he wants to be in charge. And he yeah, did his family. And uh, I got you on the side, bro. So the things you have to do, they shouldn't take care of. You know, that goes on to say, uh, my father was very strong man, very, very opinionated and a disciplinary. And a lot of times when he made a decision, it wasn't going to be a, a situation to where you could uh, argue about it. He was going to listen to what you had to say, but it was not going to change. It wasn't going to change. So you got to the point to where you were able to give a little or take with it, right? So if I'm asking that for me to another my brothers, Give a little, take a little. Some things I might, you might not agree with, with your other siblings. You might have a difference of opinion. Amen. Give a little, take a little, right? That's the way that you make things continue to work. Everybody has to make some type of sacrifices Amen. in order for things to go forward. Right. But be the person that's here to stand up and always look to uplift somebody else as opposed to looking for what's self-gratitude. Yeah. Uplift the next person and make yourself a better life. Okay. Thank you all for coming out here. I appreciate everything my dad. Right. We're going to be there. We're going to be in a better place. Thank you all. We want to thank you for your remarks. And as we continue with our service, um, we're going to ask now that Buddha and the boys come one more time.
this is the point right here.
how that's how Mr. Robinson would have done yeah. it. Just before we go into the eulogy, there's a few words that Mr. Robinson shared with me a long time ago. He said, Preacher, I want to remind you of something. You're not going to always out-sing everybody every night. And I looked at him kind of puzzled, and I kind of thought, well, that's kind of what you want us to do. You want us to be the best group, right? He said, well, what I want you to understand is you may not always out-sing them, but you can always outthink them. I do get it after a while. You may not be the best of everything that you do, but if you put some thought in it, you can make it happen. And we just, come on, let's put our hands together.
you took it to a place to where you could have hurt them. But I wasn't in the street selling drugs. I was in church singing. Y'all ain't talking. And, and, so, and, so, and so there are some things that, that I didn't hear some of y'all say because when you when you do do a eulogy you got to lift the person up and we lifted him today the eulogy has already been given because the, the family has done a tremendous job lifting up their father their grandfather great-grandfather and we just want to let you know there's some things and some words that i learned from boo and i'm sure some of the quartet fellas can can say that we didn't mention some of their names today and one of those words and sayings was, and that's very wrong. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, that's very wrong. <laughs> How many of y'all know who you say that? That's very wrong. <laughs> and then the other one, when you when he had gotten uh, taken enough of you, he said, I done told you to get. <laughs> How many of y'all have ever told you to get? Point at your neighbor and say, I done told you to get. Uh, another one was after you had, had riled him up, because you know he was very competitive after you were riled up. Uh, and you gonna get me, but I'm gonna push foot on you. <laughs> How many of y'all ever had somebody give, give tell you you're gonna on you? And uh if, if you keep if you keep messing around, I'm gonna slap the taste out your mouth. <laughs> yeah, I'm slap the taste out your mouth. And there's one I can't say in the pool, did he just put his hands on me and said, I don't sing anymore. I retired. I've been pastoring. Y'all who don't know me, I'm Pastor Melvin Dwayne Brown of the Gospel Temple Baptist Church by the way of Capitol Hill. Not Cleveland, not Canton, nor Canville, but Campbell, just like the soup. If you ever come and visit, you'll find out that it's mm, good. I've been pastoring there now uh, on, on March 13th. It will be uh, 16 years. I'm retired from singing and I've been preaching and got a great church over there. And I'm not going to hold you. I'm not really a long-winded preacher. But uh, Sabrina, uh, I haven't sang in almost a uh, good 20 years. I've been off the same. But there's a song that I'm just going to I'm going to sing just a, just a little bit of it. Oh,
Father, for your name is yet worthy of all our praise. We ask you that you would touch the preaching moment. Thank you for the opportunity to stand on holy ground, stand behind the sacred desk to proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We would ask now that you would touch this preaching moment, that these your people not only become hearers of the word, but Lord, tutor us, teach us, train us, touch us, then transform us, that we may become doers of the word. This we ask in the marvelous name of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ said, amen. Can y'all give me 10 minutes? 10 minutes and I declare I'll take my seat. There's a word, there's a word from the Lord, chapter 10, and we'll start our reading around verse 46, and it reads as well, I'll be reading from the King James Version, and they came to Jericho, and as they went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, let the class say a great number of people. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he, was old, that he should hold his peace. They told him to shut up. But he cried out the more and said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he cast away his garment and rose and came to Jesus. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. I would like to preach for a few moments from the subject, hear my cry for mercy. Let the class say, hear my cry for mercy. Dark times, dark moments in the midst of death can oftentimes blind us. It can blind us from the goodness, the graciousness, and the generosity of our God. Can't you tell y'all today, God just didn't start being good. Him been good all the time. He just didn't start giving us grace. If you really don't understand what grace is, it's a gift that we really didn't deserve. So when you got his goodness and his grace and you got his generosity, Somebody needs to be glad that when you woke up this morning, you had your right mind. Hallelujah. I wish I had a church in here. I said, when you woke up this morning, you could put your clothes on, brush your own teeth, and be in your right mind. Hallelujah. Love somebody next to you and tell them him talking about you. That's God's goodness and his grace that watched over you all night long. That gave you a checklist. I got food on the table. I got clothes on my back. I got shoes on my feet. I may not be driving in a Cadillac, but the hoopy that I got, I thank God for it. I may have to drive up to the gas station with pennies in my pocket, but I'm glad that I got something that can keep me rolling. Somebody's goodness. And I got his grace. But you know what? I'm glad that I got his generosity. In the time of death, what will happen is, is that we will overshadow how good God still is. Even in the midst of sorrow, even in the midst of sadness, even in the midst of somberness, God keeps us strong because they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. I need about five Bible readers to come on and help me right there. You'll walk, walk your mountain with wings as eagles, run and not be weary, and you'll begin to walk and not pray. Tap three people and tell them you gotta wait on the Lord. What I found out is God just won't, God just won't give you strength. He is your strength. 
contest will open doors. He is the door. So, so, so sometimes what will happen is, is that the problem that we go through, the situation that we go through can strap us and, and, and drive a wedge between our relationship with God. But, but I hear something coming in my spirit from Lamentations. It, say, it says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion faileth not. That every time we get mercy, it's new every morning. And great is thy faithfulness. Every time I see the, the word goodness, it's followed by mercy. And every time I see the word grace, it's followed by mercy. Every time I see the word generosity, I see cousin mercy coming right behind you. That's what the text is all about. It's about a blind man named Bartimaeus that the class said there's a blind man that has a condition and his name is Bartimaeus. Y'all better talk back at me. I'm that kind of preacher say there's a blind man that laid beside a road and he could not see Jesus. <laughs> I said he could not see Jesus. And his name is Bartimaeus. I got to move right now because y'all know we can't be in here too much longer. Because we're still in the middle of a pandemic, but I feel like having some church. Can I break his name down real quick before I get into the text? When you look at the name Bartimaeus, there's two syllables. The root word in Aramaic means bar, means son of. Let the class say that's son of. Greek meaning to me is the honorable one. So he's known in some circles as the honorable son of Timaeus. Somebody say, I'm going to get that when I get home. I'm going to get that. He is the son of the honorable Timaeus. But when you look at the root word uh, in, in the Greek, it's called Bartimaeus. And he's known as the son of the unclean. In some circles, he's known as the son of the honorable one. In other circles, he's known as the son of the unclean. Let the class say he got two names. If you know boo like I know boo, he didn't give us all two names. Alvin Jack, Chris Chico, Small Man Russian, Reverend Brown, thin man, and some of us in the church today got your church name and you got your street name. I better talk to y'all over here. I thought we was in church, but since y'all don't want to get real, do I got some folk over here that can get real with me real quick? Pookie and Ray Ray and Nut Nut and all them. Can y'all talk back to me up in here? Y'all know some folk, you like a real folk out in here. Oh, man, y'all don't let me get in your business. Who are you when, when, when the doors are shut and ain't nobody looking? We all got some stuff in our closets that we ain't so proud of. And we all need God because we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Look at three people and tell them he's talking about you. With your drinking and cussing and smoking self, so you coming up in here trying to get all sanctified. Everybody in here got something in their closet that they ain't so proud of. Just take about 20 seconds and stand on our feet and thank God for covering us with his grace. Look at you people and say, I got some stuff. Six more minutes. So Bartimaeus, son of the honorable one, Timaeus, but yet he's known as the son of the unclean. Let the class say he has a condition. He's been in the dark his whole life. And how many of y'all know y'all didn't have some dark times? Do I got about 
ten people that can testify that you woke up in a dark situation this morning and you really didn't know how you was going to make it out. I feel like having church in here. I stopped by here to give you a 411. Jesus is on the main line. And all you got to do is tell him what you want. Call him up and he, 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 he's in a predicament because he's been in the dark his whole life and he cannot see what he's looking for. Have you ever been there before? When your problems have overtaken you and it got you in a stuck, staring, struggling, striving situation to where you couldn't even move forward. But I stop by here to tell you, there's the cousin Mercy that came to the rescue. Because where Bartimaeus is, he cannot see, but he can still move. I said he cannot see, but he can still move. But, but the thing I like about the text, the thing I like about the text is, is that he heard that Jesus was coming by. He heard that somebody had power to get him out of the situation. And I, I, I gotta go here real quick because I, I only got like six minutes left. I, I really don't want to feel like I'm in a hurry because I feel the Holy Ghost about to come in here. You got to understand that every now and then it's the enemy's job to keep you stuck where you are. If he gets any kind of notion that you're trying to get close to God, he's going to try to drive a wedge in between. Albert, I just want to tell you, I'm, back, I'm piggybacking off your words. Freddie, I want to tell you today, I'm piggybacking off of the words. Family, I want to tell y'all today, don't let the enemy drive a wedge in between you and your brothers and your sister. It is time for us to stand as a family. Together we stand and divided we fall.
positions himself yeah. with his blind condition. Uh -huh. And he says, he cries out. That's the first point. Yeah. Let him say, he's, I said, that's the first point. Yeah. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, yeah. have mercy on me. Now you got to think about what just happened. Because he cannot see. But he hears he's on the way. And him being blind, the situation got worse instead of getting better because back then they didn't have porta potties on the highway. Y'all ain't talking to me. Can you see it now? Back in those days they didn't have rest stops. So where he positioned himself was where they used to use the bathroom. So he's up to his knees in a mess. I wish I was in church on Sunday morning. Somebody would have started running right through there. Because you got to understand, sometimes when you blind by the vicissitudes of life, instead of it moving you forward, it may take you three steps back. And you got to trust the process and keep holding on to your faith right where you are, even though you may be in a mess. Somebody cry out and say it was his faith. They told him to shut up. But when they told him to shut up, let the glass say he heard his cry. Because he stopped. But then his critics told him to shut up. The Lord don't want you where you are. But then he cried out even the more, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Then Jesus stopped. Y'all better. Woo. And, and he turned around. And he said, somebody's calling my name. I am so grateful that the Lord knows my name. I wish I could stay there for about 20 seconds. I am glad that the Lord knows my name. When my friends forget my name, God knows who I am. Even though your situation may blind you, God still knows who you are. So he addresses his critics. I thank God for all my haters. Let the class say, begin to thank God for your haters. Because the same people that hate on you, God is going to use them as your elevator to get you to where you need to be. Am I working this text? In your spare time of intimacy and quiet time with God, I want y'all to go back over the text. So, so Jesus said, okay, since y'all told him to shut up, I want y'all to go get it. Y'all going to get that on the way home. Since See, 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 what I can't stand, I was almost done. Y'all have made me do this. You know what I can't stand? I can't stand the people that, that are a part of the used to be crowd that hate on the still is crowd. Well, I got some still is in here. Yeah, you still lie, you still cuss, you still drink, you still smoke. You still hate, you still do what you do, and nobody hating on you because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But I can't stand the folk that come to church every Sunday and look at people over their glasses like now some of this stuff don't stay. And you only have to step away from being a still is. Because people don't want to come to church because the people in the church talk worse than you than the people in the street. People in Walmart are speaking to you better than people in church will. Point at me and say, You working, Brown. So he addresses his critics and he says, Since y'all told him to shut up, go get him and bring him to me. So Jesus calls him. Last part of the text says it like this, and I'm done preaching. Ain't y'all glad I could do it in 10 minutes? So, so when Jesus calls him, he stops 
See, grace is a gift you don't deserve. But mercy is love you really don't deserve. Because you really deserve to be punished. But God had mercy on you and pity on you and didn't give you what you were wrong with. All right. See, I, I got to roll up my sleeves now. Out of all the women that you slept with before you got married, you didn't get AIDS and die. Out of all the unprotected sex that you had, you still on earth and you still living. Somebody gonna get that when you get home. Out of all that you smoked, somebody didn't poison your drink. Look on my grandchildren. Yeah. 
Look out for them for the days that lie ahead. When we're talking about a strong black man, we need more strong black men in the world right now. Yeah. 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 It don't take you, it don't make you a man to tell your girl that you're a man. If you dot all your I's and crossing all your T's, making sure everything in the household is all, is all right, she gonna come over to you and rub up against you and say, baby, you need a man. The other day, he got tired. Yeah. Threw away his garment. This is not how I want to live out the rest of my life. And the Lord had mercy. Hallelujah. And he called Robert Robertson unto himself. Yes. Yes. Heard his cry. Yes. Addressed his critics. Yes. Addressed his condition. Yes. Then he changed his course. Yes. Jesus didn't even touch him. You know what he said? What? He said, go thy way. Thy faith has made me whole. Yeah. Instead of him going to play the number, you know what he did? He said, I'm following you. <laughs> Wherever you going, that's where I'm going. On, no, last thing I'm going to tell y'all, grab somebody by the hand and tell them he's done preaching, but grab by the hand real quick and say, we got to follow the Lord. Trump, but it's time to follow the Lord. <laughs> they say, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And he followed Jesus in his way. There's going to be some times in all of our lives where we're going to run into some dark, depressing times. But we got God's mercy. Matter of fact, when you don't have the words to say, and you're looking for the words to say, and you may not be attending church on the regular, you may not be doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know what I thank God for through the pandemic is that when church doors close, people should have found God in their house. So when the church opens back up, we ain't gonna have nowhere for nobody to sit. See, church, church just ain't the place where you come and act like you know God. Somebody asked me this question. She said, how do you know him? I know him after church. I know him in my bathroom. I know him in my kitchen. I know him while I'm driving in my car. I know him while I'm on my way to work. God, have mercy on me and surround me with your goodness and mercy. I can enjoy the day with you. Amen. 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 As we stand all over the building, I'm done preaching. Did I do all right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. You may have a condition. I don't want to take, I don't want to take, not let this opportunity pass us by without giving you the invitation that simply A, B, and C. Just examine your life, because this is what death does for us. Because the great thing that I can say about death, death, death will always get you to realize that we always have, we all of us have prepaid reservations with death. Right. Just as sure as you live, you're going to die. Yeah. You just don't know when, you don't know where, and you don't know how. A, B, C. Simple as this. Acknowledge the sin that's within you. Confess it with your mouth and believe within your heart that God sent Jesus to die for your sins. And the Bible says, then thou shalt be saved. I know I've asked you to do a whole lot of things today. We felt like we had calisthenics at, at the funeral. <laughs> But if you would, ma'am, please, sir, close your eyes and, and just repeat after me. Say, Lord, Lord, I need to have an encounter with you because you're speaking today. 
And I want you to know my name. Forgive me, Forgive me of any sin that I may have committed against you and against heaven. Try me and give me another chance. Hear my cry, O Lord, and have mercy. Put your hands together and give God some praise.
earth is the Lord's, the full is thereof. The world and they that the will therein. For he hath founded upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. Who hath not lifted up his soul unto God, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness of the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Lord. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting glory. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord mighty, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads. Holy gates, even lift them up the everlasting door. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked and my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing that I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Wait, I say it. 